how you doing? I'm coming to you again with a tutorial, but this time going over how to start your military uniform. All right, uh, so the starching of the uniform, we all know, isn't authorized, but uh, it does give you a more clean, presentable appearance inside of the uniform. Uh, so what I typically use is a faultless heavy hose starch. A lot of people use 50% water and 50% starch. Me, personally, I use 100% starch. Uh, so what I do is I hang it up somewhere and I want to make sure that uh, I evenly spray the starch across my entire uniform. Uh, what that's going to do for me is that's going to give me a uh, more cleaner look across the entire uniform itself. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I like to hit my uh, badges, uh, my name tapes, and I also like to uh, make sure that my uh, Velcro area is nice and flat. So I'll spray a little bit more starch in those areas. The reason why I'll spray more starch in those areas is because uh, the more starch that you have on your uniform, the stiffer your uniform is going to be. All right, so the less starch that you have, the less stiffer your uniform is going to be. Me personally, I like my uniform to look stiff, especially my jacket. Uh, so I'll spray way more starch on my jacket than I would on my trousers. All right, but you can do however much you want, okay? To, uh, it's, it's your own preference. All right, so the back of the jacket, evenly sprayed across the entire thing. I'm not really too concerned about pressing the back of my jacket as much as the front because when I sit down, I'm usually pressed up against a seat or something. Uh, so therefore, it's gonna get wrinkled anyway, but I still press it just to be on the safe side so that way the front's not starched and uh, looking crisp and clean and then the back is looking all ate up soup sandwich you know what i mean all right so uh i mean people typically use uh, different types of methods when starching the uniform so one method you can use is uh you put your uh, uniform inside the washing machine on the last wash and before you do that you spray starch on the entire uniform itself another method that you can use is uh you spray the uniform down with starch and then you put it inside the dryer on light heat. Uh, that's one method you can use. Uh, another method you can use is you can flip the uh, jacket or trousers inside out and spray the starch on the inside and then flip it back out on the outside and spray starch as well on the outside. That'll give you an actual more stiffer, uh, uh, pretty much overall look on your uniform. Uh, so here we go on the trousers. Uh, again, I want to make sure that I evenly uh, fold my trousers in half all right? because if you don't whenever you press your creases if one crease is going to look uh, Sideways and sloppy to the left or the right and the other one's going to look straight down the middle So you want to make sure that your creases are lined up and your seam is lined up straight down the middle On your actually trousers itself before you start uh, putting starch uh, so strong points you want to pay attention to in your trousers are your pockets all right, that's the biggest pet peeve in the military is your pockets. All right, so you wanna make sure that your pockets are flattened. All right, so what I usually do is I'll spray way more starch on my pockets than anything else. Uh, again, I'll flip the uh, trousers over and I'll spray the back side of the trousers as well as the front side of the trousers. Again, I say I won't spray as much on the back of my trousers or on my jacket top because again, I'll be sitting down or pressed up against something so therefore, the back is gonna get wrinkled anyway, but also to that, your trousers, uh, no one really pays attention to your trousers anyway. It's more so your jacket appearance that people are actually looking at. Uh, but in order to have that whole total, total soldier, marine, uh, sailor, airman concept, hey, just go ahead and press the entire jacket and bottom in the same concept, all right? Uh, so again, you can do the same concept with your trousers. You can take it and put it in the washer on the last wash and, uh, spray it with starch or throw it in the dryer with light heat and the same thing. All right, uh, so to each its own uh, Take pride in your uniform. It's the reason why I'm making this tutorial uh, a lot of people ask me about what do I do to press my uniform? I do not take it to the dry cleaner. I haven't taken my uniform to the dry cleaner in maybe three or four years uh, I've always press my uniform myself. It saves me a lot of money because one can of spray starch costs about a dollar fifty a can and you can buy that at Target, Walmart, grocery stores, wherever they sell uh, laundry items at. Uh, and it saves me 15 bucks a week uh, on my uniform itself. All right guys, so now we're gonna get into actually ironing the uniform itself. You wanna make sure that you got a good iron and a uh, nice, flat, clean 
uh, ironing board. All right, so what I do is I usually take it and I'll lay it flat, uh, starting with the actual uh, sided portion. I don't iron my uniform uh, with it as a hole on the iron board. I iron it uh, piece by piece. Uh, so what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I apply steam to every part of the uniform itself. Uh, I, I pay particular attention to the uh, Velcro areas. And the reason why I say that is because if I don't actually press it down all the way, it actually look like it's poking out when my uniform is actually zipped up together. So I wanna make sure that I actually uh, press the Velcro area a lot harder, apply more steam, and then also uh, on my badges. Uh, again, uh, I sprayed a lot of starch in the badges during the starching tutorial. And uh, I wanna make sure that I apply a lot of steam and heat to that area so that way my badges and my name tapes look a lot stiffer. Also at the bottom of my uniform, uh, I don't like it flapping like as if the wind is blowing and the bottom's flapping up. I like for it to look stiff. So I actually apply a little bit more steam there as well. So the key to this guys is the more heat that you apply to your uniform uh, along with the starch, uh, the amount of starch that you apply to your uniform, you're going to get the results that you want. Uh, if I don't turn my iron all the way up on maximum heat and I don't fill it all the way up with a lot of water to give it that heat, then I won't get the results that I want from my uniform. All right. So uh, the amount of heat that you actually apply to the uniform and the amount of starch that you apply to the uniform will give you the results of a dry cleaned uniform. Okay. Uh, so with the back of the uniform, uh, with that flap, uh, I tend to, I don't, I'm very particular about how I want my uniform to look in different areas. So on the back of the uniform where that actual extra flap is on the back, uh, I usually press that down a lot harder too. Uh, so you know, again, you know, it's your preference, whatever you decide to do, uh, it's just what I decided to do and it's worked for me. Uh, my uniform looks like it just came straight out the dry cleaner every single time. All right. So a few uh, key points on this as well. Uh, the same concept, if you start to run out of water, hey, fill the iron back up and put more water in there, that's gonna give you a lot more steam. Uh, the type of iron that I use is a Chi iron. It's about $69.99 at Walmart or Target, uh, and it provides 1,700 watts of uh, power. All right, so if you get one of those cheap little hotel irons, you're not gonna get uh, the results that you want. So spend your money. Get a nice iron and uh, you'll save a lot more money in the end. There I'm showing you that flap that I was saying before. Uh, I, I pay particular attention to that because I want to make sure that it's pressed down and it's not looking like a, a track jacket in the back, <laughs> if I would per se. Alright, so uh, just make sure that you're applying that heat and that pressure. Um, you don't want to have a uniform wet while you're ironing it you want the uniform to be completely dry all right so i usually let it dry for about one to two hours and i ensure that the uniform is stiff when i pick it up after i've applied the starch uh, i also pat it down to make sure there's no wet spots if you iron a uniform with wet starch it's going to be flaky all right i know some of you probably ever experienced it before um it was a lesson learned for me when i first started doing this so I, I found a trick and I just let the starch just set on the uniform itself and just dry. And it actually works a lot better. You get a, a, a lot better product versus ironing a uniform with it wet. All right, so on the sleeves, um, the sleeves are a very hard area to iron and press down because you have that Velcro pocket. Um, so what I do is I put all my, my uh, patches on my uniform uh, before I iron it. And the reason why I do that is because I want to iron my patches and everything down as well. I want everything to look and sinking in uniform with each other. All right, that's just a pet peeve of mine. It's just my own preference, okay? So I wanna press it down. I wanna ensure that I get up on top of the Velcro area, and I wanna make sure that uh, I don't put pressure on the actual zipper itself. If you put uh, heat, uh, I'm sorry, if you put heat on the actual zipper continuously, uh, it's gonna melt the zipper. And at one point in time, you won't be able to unzip that zipper at all if your uniform has zippers on it, okay? So um, just make sure that you don't apply too much heat to those zippers. Uh, again, the other side, I apply a lot more heat. I fold it out how I want it to look, and I just go ahead and just press it down. Uh, it's the same concept as the dry cleaners. 
Uh, the more heat that you apply, hey, the better results that you're going to get. Okay. Um, so just make sure that when you're doing this, you're, you're you're taking your time with it. You're not rushing through it because you don't want your uniform to look all crazy. Okay. You want it to look professional. All right. You want to uphold an image uh, that you're trying to uphold, and that is uh, being a, a service member of the United States military. Okay. Um, so whatever you put into your uniform, that's what you're going to get out of it when you press it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and show you how to actually press down the collar. Now this is vital, okay? Because I know a lot of people see uh, soldiers, airmen, uh, Marines uh, walking around and uh, they have their collars popped up and they, I can't stand it, it's a pet peeve of mine. So this is the most important part of pressing my jacket for me. And I apply a lot of heat and I press down hard on the iron and I wanna make sure that my collar stays flat all day long okay all right so you can position your collar all right however you want it to look as long as it's within uh, standards and guidelines and uh, just press it down pull a lot of heat pull a lot more pressure and if you remember back in the tutorial when I was spraying my uniform down with starch I saturated my collar with starch all right. okay so apply a lot of heat to that area and your uniform will come out looking just fine all right so if you have any questions or anything, hey, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know how you press your uniform, you know, uh, give me some ideas and tips. Okay, but this is just how I do mine. This has worked for me for the last 14 years of my career. And uh, like I said, it saves money, a lot of money it saves and uh, it works. So like, subscribe, drop a comment and uh, wish you the best of luck. Thanks for watching.